Greetings, all. I'm Greg Schlegel, your host for this webinar covering supply chains and risk management, two disciplines joined at the hip. It's indeed a pleasure to be with you today to share our insights on our passion. Before we discuss our passion, give you a quick uh, bio. Um, I'm the founder of the Supply Chain Risk Management Consortium at Lehigh University in the States, and we'll have a little bit more on that in a minute. I teach supply chain risk management at Lehigh University in our MBA and executive education programs. I also teach ERM, Enterprise Risk Management, at Villanova University in their executive MBA program in the States as well. I've been an IBM supply chain executive consultant for several years. Uh, I've been a supply chain exec for several Fortune 100 manufacturers and past president of the Apex organization during the late 90s. Our dialogue for today looks like this. We'll give you a glimpse of supply chain management. We'll talk about risk management. We'll give you our point of view on both, which we call supply chain risk management. We'll then get into a little bit of the what, the why, and the how of SCRM. We'll also then talk a little bit more about some thoughts on going forward with these concepts. And then maybe at the end, we'll have time for Q&A. First, I'd like to share the background on our Supply Chain Risk Management Consortium. It has grown out of our MBA risk class at Lehigh. We've been teaching that class for about seven years now. Uh, the consortium is now up to about 22 different companies and about 1,000 risk professionals around the globe. We have consultancies in the consortium, we have educators, we have software companies, and many, many more. All of these companies who, are, who have their own P&L and their own brand bring tools, techniques, and solutions that support our new books and vision of supply chain risk management, and we'll talk about that in a bit. As you can see on the bottom right, Lehigh, my university, is a member of the consortium. And I, I thought I'd uh, share with you our client country profile. Uh, why do we just show where we work with our clients? Because whether you know this or not, many companies in the risk business do not allow us to talk overtly about our risk engagements with them. Why? Because they tend to consider good supply chain risk management as a strategic advantage. Let's talk initially about supply chain management and get you grounded. A quick hit uh, set of definitions, uh, keep it real simple. First of all, the supply chain is a local, regional, national, or global network used to deliver products from raw materials to end customers through an engineered flow of information, physical distribution, and cash, what we in supply chain call the three flows. This definition comes from APEX who is now ASCM, the Association for Supply Chain Management. They have several different um, certificates and certifications. They are one of the premier supply chain uh, management educators around the globe, and we'll talk more about APEX uh, during the discussion. A more expanded, complicated view 
of supply chain management is the design, planning, execution, control, and monitoring of supply chain activities with the objective of creating net value and building a competitive infrastructure, leveraging worldwide logistics, synchronizing supply with demand, and measuring performance globally. Again, this expanded version of the definition of supply chain management comes from APEC. A little different view that I want to share with you is more of a holistic view about supply chain management. It is a comprehensive business solution approach across an entire development, production, sales, and service environment. Let's talk a little bit about starting at the top right, and we'll talk about going downstream in the, in the expanded supply chain. Think of it this way. We'll talk from top left to bottom right. Product design and engineering, if you are producing and making product, and you purchase the raw materials. Then you do production planning and scheduling of those raw materials, components, and finished goods. You have production monitoring and reporting systems. You have a management decision support set of tools to take, make, ship, and bill that product. You have sales and marketing folks. You may have a field product service arena or a discipline. And you have to manage your customers. Going upstream from bottom left to top left, you have distribution of those products and components in and out. You have order fulfillment of your products from your customer base. You have to manage material and inventory. You have logistics to be concerned about, both inbound and outbound to your facilities. And then coming back is you are your supply base, the supplier. So it's a pretty, gets pretty complicated, folks, very quickly, especially in a global supply chain. Talk about complications. Let's talk a little bit about supply chain complexity. And I will be truthful to you, there's more complexity in our supply chains than ever before. Why? Because of the Internet, folks, and because of global trade. Let's take a look. This is essentially what a complicated supply chain can look like if you go from the bottom left to right. Let's just talk about it. On the left-hand side, you could have your vendors. We like to call them suppliers who you don't control. Next, from left to right, you might have contract manufacturers, folks who make certain elements of your finished product for you. They make it better, faster, cheaper. Then you have your plants or other plants as well, partner plants, where you manufacture the goods. Then you move it into warehouses, whether it's your warehouse or your customers. Those tend to move towards the distribution or your distributors. You might have DC distribution centers your customers and partners may have DC centers. Then it potentially goes to a retailer, perhaps, and then finally to the ultimate customer. It can get complex real quick, folks. Couple more slides on getting you grounded on supply chain. Supply chain management, in our view, achieves two key goals. First on the left, Increase customer satisfaction. How do you do that? We'll just talk about left uh, to right on, uh, on a clockwise uh, uh, circle. You, how do you do that? You fulfill your orders rapidly to your customers. If you do that, then and if you fill those orders complete and you ship them accurately, ship them on time to your customer, and you have a very responsive production, that circle associated with increased customer satisfaction yields operational excellence in supply chain. On the right-hand side, 
supply chain increases shareholder value. How do we do that? On the top left, moving again in a clockwise mo motion, revenue growth. You must do elements. You must support in supply chain top line revenue growth. That can lead to tax reduction for your company if you run your fixed capital efficiently, which can lead to more working capital or what we call free cash. What do you do with that free cash? You attempt to grow your top line, bottom line revenue. If you do all those things uh, correctly and effectively, then you will increase your market capitalization, which is the value of your organization on the street. And finally, good supply chain management fuels prop, prop, profitable growth. How? You support the business strategy at the top. When you do that, how do you do that? By running your supply chain effectively. What does that mean? Down the bottom. You're continually cutting your costs and your inventories and optimizing your assets. If you do those things, that leads to additional capital to invest in what? In either tools, techniques, methodologies, all in an effort to support effectively that business strategy. That, folks, is uh, our quick hit view of good supply chain management. Let's now move into risk management, talk a little bit about uh, risk management from our perspective. I thought I would start here and talk about enterprise risk management, affectionately known as ERM. We are a big advocate of ERM. This comes from the risk and insurance profession. I'll just go through real quick to get you grounded on ERM. The methods and processes used by organizations to manage risk and seize opportunities related to the achievement of their objectives. ERM provides a framework for risk management, which typically involves identifying the risks or circumstances to the organization's objectives, assessing those risks in terms of the likelihood and magnitude of the impact of that risk, and then determining a risk response plan and monitoring progress. Again, we're big advocates of ERM as a framework to support this journey called supply chain risk management. Next, we understand that COSO, for those of you out there in the risk profession, we understand that COSO and ISO 31000 are undergoing revisions. We utilize this seven-step ERM framework when we talk with our clients and our students about supply chain risk management. Again, we are big proponents of the ERM framework. Let's take a look. First and foremost, define the internal risk environment. Of course, you have to define the business environment regarding how risk is viewed in your company, your risk appetite, and the philosophy associated with risk taking in your company. Next. You have to insert risk into the strategy. What does that mean? Insert the risk management into the business strategic process so that the risk objectives are consistent with your risk appetite as a company and your business mission. Net, net, you have to embed, we advocate you have to embed risk management in your daily business decisions. Next. Disruptive event identification. This is nothing more than having the ability to identify internal and external events that could disrupt your business. This could be with alerts, subscriptions, and so forth. <clears throat> because what you don't know about your supply chain can and will hurt you folks. Next, risk assessment. Once you identify those risks, 
You have to detail the probability of occurrence for those risks and their magnitude. You have to quantify the risk. And we'll talk more about some of the methodologies we advocate uh, in a minute. Next, a risk response. Logical, once you identify and assess, then you have to develop a portfolio, potentially, of responses to meet the type and severity of that risk. We like to call them RRPs, Risk Response Plans. A couple more elements of the ERM model, information and communication. You gotta detail how event and response information is captured, communicate and monitor it. You, folks, our observation over the eight years in this business, you cannot over communicate about good supply chain risk management. Because the minute you stop communicating, people who are human will basically say that fad is complete. And last, on the ERM framework, risk event monitoring. Define how your progress of your risk response and time to recovery are measured, meaning you need to develop KRIs, key risk indicators, elements like dashboards. You have to keep people advised in terms of almost taking a look at a heat map dashboard of your supply chain. We'll talk more about that in a minute. I wanna to move to our next slide. We also like to profile uh, what we feel a mature risk organization looks like. So we'll go through a couple of tenets uh, for you as well. First, mature risk organizations have a process. Clear communication of risk information, policies, procedures, practices, thresholds for your risk appetite and tolerance, and the ability, folks, to perform what-if scenarios and change analysis. We'll talk more about that, but you need to be able to understand how your organization will respond to certain risk stimuli. Another one, element. Organizational structure, management accountability folks for risk management activities within the overall governance of your company. Roles and responsibilities are established to execute risk initiatives. These are metrics to drive behavior folks. Knowledge, risk information integrated into your core decision making process and the ability to drill down to successive levels within your organization to talk and understand about a certain risk. This, is, this has to be part and parcel to your daily business decision making. What else do we have? Technology, obviously. Use of query, reporting tools, heat maps, dashboards. We're a big advocate of balanced scorecards. There's your ERM system, event management tools that can show you every hour what's going on around the globe in terms of risk events. These are what we call, folks, enablers. And the last tenet, performance. Ability to integrate and align risk with corporate goals, historical analysis of key risk and performance indicators. These are your KRIs, key risk indicators and to be able to articulate over time the benefits derived by this type of journey. All right. That concludes our section on risk management. Uh, next, we want to talk a little bit about our point of view on both of these disciplines, something we call supply chain risk management. First, I want to start with our supply chain risk landscape. On the top left, we like to consider uh, the term end-to-end -end coverage. I would say this to you, as large and as complex as your supply chain might be, if you have one, that's the landscape for your supply chain risk. And you need to think about it, not in a silo, but end-to-end, -end, from raw material suppliers 
to um, and customers. And that's what we have here. We'll, we'll go, not sure where you are, but you might be a raw material supplier. You might be a manufacturer of those raw materials. You may be a warehouse or distribution center, uh, or you may be the end customer. But we would, we would articulate to you and stress what you first need to do is to understand where your company resides within your industry supply chain and then start to identify those threats and risks. And the threats and risks, folks, are on both the bottom and the top uh, of, the, uh, of the supply chain arrow. There, trust me, there are enough threats and risks, no matter what you make around the globe, to keep us busy. Our point of view, in terms of uh, the definition of supply chain risk management, is this coming from our book. Our department head, Dr. Uh, Robert Trent, and I uh, articulated this definition in our 2015 book called Supply Chain Risk Management and Emerging Discipline. It looks like this to us. It is the implementation of strategies to manage everyday and exceptional risks along the entire supply chain through continuous risk assessment with the objective of reducing vulnerability and ensuring continuity. Think of it this way. We think of it as a terrific intersection between good supply chain management and solid risk management, folks. And we'll, we'll talk more about these two powerful disciplines a bit later in the uh, presentation. Next. Our 21st century supply chain risk and maturity model. The entire book is built around this model. Let's go through it. On the left hand side, the y axis of the graph is supply chain maturity from low to high. Essentially, on the x axis is competitive advantage to your company from zero to infinity. Then essentially we have four basic stages. You can see them: visibility, predictability, resiliency, and sustainability. And I'll give you a quick thumbnail sketch of each one. Visibility, that's end-to-end -end visibility in your organization, from your suppliers, suppliers, to your customers, customers. Most of us don't have good visibility, folks. And the reason it's number one in this four-stage model is if what you don't know about your supply chain can and will hurt you. The next stage, predictability. Not necessarily what you might be thinking. Our definition of this stage is digitizing your supply chain in order for you to develop what if modeling capabilities of your entire supply chain to understand how your supply chain might react to certain risk stimuli. That's what we mean by predictability. Third level, resiliency. This is where you begin to build an agile and flexible supply chain with all the tools, techniques, methodologies we're gonna share with you today. And then finally, the last stage, is sustainability. We advocate that when you do the first three and you're ready to do sustainability, essentially that means embedding all these tools, techniques, methodologies, and ERM, GRC protocols into your daily business decision. Each one of these stages, folks, lasts about two years from our observations and our interviews with exemplar companies, which we'll talk about in a bit. We have a mantra that we, you will hear me talk about uh, throughout this presentation. It's identify the risk, assess the risk, mitigate the risk, and manage the risk. As you move through these four stages, we have an inherent mantra. As your supply chain maturity processes 
grow in maturity, your supply chain inherent risks decrease. With that said, this is why we tend to superimpose a heat map associated with our model. Again, from red, yellow, green, if you don't have visibility, I would submit to you folks, first and foremost, get enhanced visibility in your supply chain. If you do nothing else, start there. Because again, what you don't know about what's going on in your supply chain can and will hurt you. And as you move up that maturity curve, by observation, we uh, would say that you can move from high risk to low risk, not no risk, because uh, eliminating risk is very difficult, but low risk. One more in this section, the four spheres of supply chain risk. This comes from the book, and this basically is where are the risks, folks? We, we talk about the four risks. I'll talk about uh, each one real quick. Up on the top left, it's supply side risks. Yes, that's what we call upstream supply chain. Those are your suppliers and their suppliers, all right? On the right-hand side, demand side risk. Can you have uh, as many and as impactful demand side risks as you have supply? Yes, yes folks, this is downstream to your distributors, warehouse partners, and customers. You can have the same number, if not more, demand side risks to your company than supply risks. The third, processes. These are people, process, and programs that you say you control within your supply chain. Can you have uh, risk events in your own supply chain? Yes, you can. Most of us have them every day. And finally, the largest environmental landscape. This is huge, folks. They are all the risks you have no control of. These are natural disasters, governments and geopolitical risks, taxes, tariffs, uh, and more and more and more. All right, so this is our picture image of where the risks are within the supply chain. Moving on. We want to talk a little bit about the what, the why, and the how of supply chain risk management. First and foremost, busy slide, but this depicts, folks, the scope and scale of supply chain risk management. This is a 2014 study done by a company called Chainlink Research here in the United States. They reside in Massachusetts. We've worked with them. This was the first comprehensive study of all the tools, techniques, and solutions available in this space, and it was done in 2014. Just real quick, take a look. There are three segments. The, dark, the light green is the core segments, the uh, turquoise wrapping around the, uh, the center, are what they call the supporting arena, and then the purple are the ancillary. I'm not gonna go through them all, but you can take a look at the core, all the things we've talked about already and more, good supply chain risk, uh, supply chain mapping, BCP, supplier uh, evaluations, you know, and so forth. You can then take a look at all the tools, techniques, and elements that are being developed to support the core uh, areas of supply chain risk management. And then the purple are two elements on the bottom right are all the supply chain performance tools that we all use. And on the top right are the GRC and ERM type frameworks to be embedded into your company. A little bit more on the what, why, and the how. Here's what we're teaching at Lehigh with Apex and around the globe with our other partners. I'll just tee them up, folks, real quick. I believe we have 10 tenants. Just want to tee them up for you. 
and then talk just a little, uh, little bit about them, and then we'll move on. As you can see, it's a pretty comprehensive uh, uh, type of uh, curriculum. We talk about risk identification, assessment, and the tools, uncertainty, complexity, and risk. We get into scenario and risk response planning, fraud, theft, and counterfeit, counterfeiting folks across all industries. That is huge, folks. Very, very disconcerting. We get into business continuity planning. We teach risk mitigation tools, techniques, and tactics within the confines of supply chain. Then the, 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 the next three are organizational development, KRIs, GRC and ERM, a little structure, folks, goes a long way, especially in a complex supply chain. And then you've already witnessed uh, what we call our 21st century supply chain maturity model. Next, give you a glimpse of what we do for organizations uh, in terms of uh, engagement. We, we actually leverage the body of knowledge from our new supply chain risk management book. We uh, attempt to teach the body of knowledge at Lehigh and Villanova universities in their MBA program, which I mentioned to you. We facilitate over 25 workshops a year around the globe. They range from two-day, three-day, four-day, and five-day workshops and up per year working with our partners such as Apex, which is now ASCM, a company called Layaron out of uh, Dubai, uh, another education company uh, called the Logistics Institute of Canada, Muhatkat and Trax Education Company in Jordan, uh, IRM, which we're working with now, which is great, uh, and several others. What do we do? We provide certificates of achievement and certifications via our partners in the areas of supply chain risk management and supply chain risk and resiliency, including a new supply chain risk and resiliency certificate from Lehigh University emanating from a new online course, which we'll talk about in a minute. And finally, we attempt to lead, guide, direct, and coach companies in their SCRM and supply chain risk and resiliency journey. Let's talk about resiliency for a minute. This is the why. We talked a little bit about the what do we do. This is the why would anyone spend any money and time and resources on supply chain risk management? Well, to build a resilient supply chain. And this is one of the best uh, definitions of resilient uh, supply chains that we've seen so far. A resilient enterprise has the capacity to overcome disruptions and continually transform itself to meet the changing needs and expectations of its customers, shareholders, and other stakeholders. Folks, that's a very tall order. It is. I will not lie to you. Huh. Why, where did we get this? We, uh, we received this uh, back in 2011, we still think this is a very good definition of supply chain resiliency. This fr comes from the SCORE framework, supply chain organizational uh, reference model, the SCORE Supply Chain Council, who has been operating for about 12 or 15 years, is now part of APEX. I just wanted to share that with you. A couple more reasons why. People would or should essentially uh, spend time and money. This is the top five most significant supply chain events by time to recovery out of 2016. The, these come from, uh, this comes from a company called Resilink and Event Watch, which is a portion of Resilink. Resilink is a software company which has a supply chain community of about 40,000 facilities around the globe connected to each other who are being rated from a risk point of view every quarter. Very good uh, support in terms of supply chain risk management. Take a look at these top five supply chain events. They are all black swan events 
but I want you to take a look at the time to recovery. And I submit to you and ask you folks, could your company survive for 37 weeks without revenue? It gets worse, folks. I'll add this. From the insurance industry, with 20% of all companies impacted by a moderate to severe catastrophic event go out of business in 15 to 18 months, and another 15% go out of business in 24 to 36 months. To us folks, that's compelling reason to act. We have more. This is a uh, profile of um, a comp uh, several companies on the bottom of the slide. You may not be able to read them, but uh, more and more companies, folks, are capturing the financial impacts of supply chain disruption. This one happens to be back in 2015. They uh, talked to about 400 companies globally and came up with the average number of annual disruptions was 11. There's more. The average cost per disruption to any company averaged around $350,000 in U.S. dollars. So the net net, folks, is the net net, on average, there's about $4 million U.S. dollars per year to mitigate risks out of your company's pocket. All right, so we consider that pretty compelling in terms of uh, why one would want to spend time. We have more. How do we do supply chain risk management? We'll just give you a glimpse. The consortium provides education. We help identify and assess risks. We have cloud-based risk appetite tools and risk maturity models. We have companies who maintain probabilistic supply chain models, very complex, and we have companies who provide supply chain mapping solutions so you can map all the nodes in your supply chain. We quantify risks for our clients and our students utilizing elements called RPN, risk priority numbering. Very simple, this comes out of the six Sigma environment. We advocate and calculate VAR, value at risk, which is exposure times time to recovery times probability of event. We utilize another Six Sigma technique called FMEA, failure mode effect analysis. We also utilize something called the Altman Z score. If you're not aware of this, this is a methodology that can predict bankruptcy for any company 15 to 18 months ahead in the future with about a 90% accuracy, folks. Altman Z-Score is free. All you need to do is acquire income and balance sheet data for any company, and you can calculate the Altman Z-Score for both public and private companies. Very compelling, and it's free. What else do we do? We mitigate risks, leveraging best practices, and help manage risks through embedding ERM and GRC frameworks. When appropriate, organizational alignment engagements, we advocate BCP, we advocate and support what-if modeling of your entire complex supply chain, doing scenario playbooks, what we call risk response plans. I want to move into giving you a sense of the degree of difficulty in supply chain risk management. And I'll, I'll identify them. The green is identifying risks. The orange is assessing those risks. The red is mitigating those risks. And the blue is managing those risks. Let's take a look. Pretty much identifying risk, folks, it's pretty much an academic exercise. You have many methods to uh, choose from. You have alerts. We have risk reports. We have corporate data, all the tools and techniques. We have questions of discovery and much more. 
pretty much an academic exercise. Assessing risks, a bit more difficult, but still an academic exercise. However, you have many methodologies, which we talked about, and techniques to quantify, like RPN, FMEA, VAR, time to recovery, scenario planning, and digital modeling. Very exciting times because those enabler techniques are coming to the forefront. This, folks, is risk um, mitigation. And I would say this is the most difficult. Why? Because it involves change, folks. Nobody likes change, all right? To mitigate people, process, and program risks, one may need to change behavior. Why do we focus on this? Because this is the most difficult part of the supply chain risk management journey. And the last, still difficult, but maintainable is sustaining it. This essentially is where you need executive uh, commitment uh, for funding, resources, and tools to continuously identify, assess, mitigate, and manage your risks. We have a few more to share with you in terms of the how. This is a profile of our supply chain maturity heat map assessment tool. The tool has 13 tenants. You can see them all associated with supply chain. It measures your supply chain maturity in terms of people, process, and programs, and your inherent risk at a very high level. Uh, take a look at it. You, have, you see the green, the yellow, and the red circle. Inside the green, uh, this is where you have mature supply chain processes and low risk. Inside the green, folks, is normally where the exemplars reside, and you have low inherent risk. From green out to the red, through the yellow, not as mature in terms of uh, those processes, and you have a bit higher risk. Outside the red, we call that el fuego, folks. That means you're on fire, all right? Uh, what does that mean? That means you have very immature supply chain processes, which we feel lends itself to a very high level of inherent risk. The stars are the uh, most recent three tabs, tenets that we put in. Those tenets are intentional redundancies in your supply chain, risk mitigation planning, and agility in your supply chain. And we star them because these basically don't have many gray areas. And this is what we, we, why we put it in there. You can't really get into a gray area. You either do these three and are committed to these three or you don't. Additionally, we're working on a game simulator in supply chain risk management, all right? Um, essentially, this will be computer models with risk disruptions. Why, why are we moving this way because we know as educators that games and simulation accelerate learning. So we're beginning to put that together and hopefully injecting that into our ongoing um, seminars. A couple more slides and then we'll finish. This is very new news. We've launched a new online course in supply chain risk and resiliency. The online version of our, it's the online version of our book it has three levels. You may not be able to read them, but the three levels going from left to right, bottom to top, are tactical level, uh, operationalizing all the things, all the elements in the course, and then uh, from a strategic holistic view. So these three levels support our four-stage maturity model. It involves assessment projects. Uh, and so forth, it's a bona fide MBA course, all right? When you finish the course, essentially uh, level one and two are live as of December of 2018. When you finish the course, you will receive uh, a certificate of achievement uh, from Lehigh University and the URL is on the bottom of the screen. One more slide and then we'll uh, conclude. 
This is a picture image of our roadmap. I'm not going to go through all the elements, but essentially just think of it as uh, a maturity uh, roadmap on the left-hand side is supply chain and risk maturity from low to high on the x-axis are five levels uh, with um, some uh, uh, profile, uh, but essentially you can see this is a journey. It's not a point solution. And essentially the elements look like this. Uh, from the bottom left, it's uh, education first. Then in the orange, it's awareness. In the yellow, it's assessing and quantifying. In the blue, it's mitigation. And then finally in the green, it's management or uh, embedding all those tools, techniques, and elements into uh, your organization. So it is a journey, folks. I just wanted to depict that to you. All right, our final section is going forward. We uh, like to talk about uh, going forward and using this slide, uh, the concept slide. Uh, and this is why we think the supply chain risk management is important. All right, let's start again, look at the graph. On the y-axis on the left of the graph is the value of your organization on the street, the total dollar value of your organization from low to high. On the x-axis is basically time from zero to infinity. Essentially, what we ask is if on the top left, if your company would experience the start of a major risk event, which path would you want your company to follow? Red, yellow, or green? Of course, it's kind of a rhetorical question. We all would want our company to operate on the green level. But to do that, folks, to do that, you need to learn how to reduce the time and duration of an event. You need to learn how to reduce the severity and the slope of the event. And you need to learn how to accelerate the time to recovery, which is on the right-hand side uh, of the screen. Because if you don't and you end up in an event on the red path, chances are there's no guarantee of survival. If you follow the green line, there's a lot more uh, opportunity there, including garnering new market share because you were better prepared and more responsive to that event than your nearest competitor. That's why we think it's compelling to spend time. Couple more slides and then we'll, we'll uh, entertain some questions perhaps. This depicts the three E's, an evangelist. As an evangelist, this is how we feel this concept will gain traction. All right, there are two powerful groups in any manufacturing organization. One group is finance on the left. The other group is operations, which normally includes uh, supply chain. We call this the three E's at the moment. You can see on finance, finance folks understand risk management. In your company, they may be doing hedging. If you're a global company, they may be advocating enterprise risk management. They are certainly buying hazard insurance to protect the uh, enterprise, and they may be advocating and exercising business continuity planning. If you're doing anything, in supply chain risk, you are probably operating in a supply chain management group, all right? We're now doing more and more education, and as we educate these folks who are in operations, we feel that that's going to elevate the conversation about risk across these two groups, risk management and supply chain management, which ultimately will evolve into more and more synergy, more and more discussion between these two powerful groups. And to us folks, that is a strategic advantage. And finally, uh, we, uh, we wanted to share with you two supply chain risk exemplar companies. 
On the top, we have Flextronics, who has uh, who is bought into supply chain risk management, has basically all the tools and techniques that we just talked about, and has a war room. You're looking at it. We don't know where it is, but they have a supply chain risk management war room where they watch their supply chain globally 24-7. Another newer supply chain risk management war room is uh, from a company called uh, Zera. They're uh, high-performance uh, retail apparel. They are very, very good at supply chain performance and also supply chain risk and ultimately have built a supply chain war room to monitor their supply chain and risk across their global supply chains. What does it look like going forward? What's the consortium game plan for 2019? We think it looks a little like this. Very exciting. First, we're pushing for a taxonomy. If a concept's gonna turn into a discipline, you need terms and definitions and they need to be standardized. Second, we encourage new software solutions coming on board. You saw the picture from Chainlink Research. There are about five supply chain risk management software companies coming online every quarter, folks, around the globe. Very encouraging. Third, we advocate additional standards. You all know about COSO, ERM. There's also uh, ISO, other ISO um, standards. There's ASIS, there's NIST, NIST. More and more standards, I believe, are coming in this arena. Fourth, we need more workshops and education forums, both universities and companies uh, teaching uh, the concept. Fifth, more ROI, return on investment case studies from exemplar companies. Some share, some do not. We need more companies to share. And then finally, we're advocating what we call a VOR, voice of record. What does that mean? That's a company that basically says, I have all those tools, techniques, methodologies, and this is where you should come because I have those that data to provide to you to lead, guide, direct, and coach you. So very exciting. Folks, that concludes our, um, our discussion on supply chains and risk management. Uh, two disciplines joined at the hip. Uh, I essentially uh, am looking for some uh, questions. I'd be more than willing to answer any questions from the audience. I don't see any questions at the moment. Uh, if that's the case, I'll give uh, folks um, a, uh, a minute or two to uh, perhaps ask a question. But again, um, I appreciate the time. Uh, hope you found it uh, informative and uh, productive, and I, I wish you all the best in your um, supply chain risk management journey. I have one uh, one question so far. Will your slides be available? Um, I believe I believe they will, and um, uh, uh, probably on uh, the uh, IRM uh, website. So uh, that's my uh, uh, unabashed answer to that particular question. I'm still on. I'm looking for any other questions. And I'll, I'll stay on for a couple more minutes. Uh, I think one just came in. How is the online course structured? Is it modular and over how long? Very good question, uh, uh, individual. Uh, that's um, It's structured in three levels, uh, kind of like uh, low, medium, and high in terms of uh, impact. You can, um, 
log in and take one at a time. Um, they, uh, they, you know, again, it's tactical first, then operational, and then holistically and strategically. So yes, you can take them one at a time. Uh, the length, uh, I believe the length, if you think about it, it's about 28 contact hours of education. It's close to a full MBA, including folks. To get your certificate, you need to go through a project and get, a, get it peer reviewed using the tools that we embed into the, um, into the course. So I hope I answered your, your question. I have a few more. Uh, you're interested in going through the online course of your university, I will go through the same on the website. Yeah, good. Uh, hit the uh, URL, folks. I put it in one of the slides. If you, if you uh, have any other questions for us at Lehigh and the consortium, I believe I've uh, put my uh, two different email addresses on the first and last slide. So I'd be more than willing to um, entertain any questions that you might have uh, via email. I'm, uh, I'm holding on to hope here and uh, looking uh, for any other questions. Hold on. How much does the course cost? Very, very good question, folks. I believe, uh, again, I'm the author, a uh, co-author, I believe it's $200 US for the tactical, the first level. And I think it's $400 individually for the second level, which is operational. And then I think it's um, $800 US for the third level. And so you can do the math. If you bundle them, if you buy into all three, I believe there's a 25 or 30% discount on those prices. And again, it will take you about 26, 28 contact hours. Uh, relate that to wall clock. I believe, folks, you have a year, 12 months, in the education platform to finish all three levels to get your certificate. <clears throat> okay. BCP, inputs. good, I'm glad. There's a, a couple of uh, comments. All right, I'm gonna stay on for a few more minutes and uh, try to answer any other questions before I hit the end uh, presenter session. All right, uh, let's see. Uh -huh. I believe I've answered everything so far. Still, still looking. I'd be more than willing to uh, answer a few more. I'll give you another minute or two, and then we'll uh, we'll close out the uh, session. I saw an individual um, who is thinking about BCP for supply chain management. Uh, I'm very glad, and hopefully. Uh, Glad you uh, enjoyed the, uh, the presentation, and hopefully uh, it will uh, assist you uh, on, on your journey. All right, folks, coming up on the last minute, I want to give you uh, one more minute, and then I will hit the end presenting uh, box, and we'll um, conclude our session. All right, folks, again, I appreciate the opportunity to share our insights with you. Again, we mentioned uh, we're going to be uh, hopefully collaborating with uh, the Institute of Risk uh, Management. We thank them for the opportunity to share our insights with you. And uh, again, all the best in your supply chain risk management journey.